Welcome to the live arc and this next episode of Indic Modernity. This is an essay on the recently concluded India Art Fair, which I'm calling Ways of Seeing the India Art Fair. A review of the fair published on May 1st, 2022 in the international newspaper, The Guardian, called the fair, and I quote, a turning point, unquote. The question is, turning from what to what? The article emphasizes that art South Asia has moved towards the representation of gender and sexuality, not unlike in Europe and North America, it implies. To the review, the curator, the art collector, the critic, any of them have their finger on the pulse of the emergent Indian artist and the feel of the emergent mediums. The fair was mounted after a two-year hiatus resulting from the COVID pandemic. If the art scene has pivoted in these two years, the curatorial efforts did not give any clear cues. The professed theme for the fair was emblazoned on the 50 feet mural outside the venue, which announced, the future is femme. The five-year-old Aravani Trans Collective, which has executed other such public murals across the country, was conspicuously positioned to send a message of inclusivity, intersectionality and empowerment, not just for the trans community, but other marginalized communities as well. However, this theme was largely absent from the fair, except for the one workshop, Art Ability. With the exception of the biographical vignettes of the Aravani Collective, the article in The Guardian failed to sustain the focus of inclusivity and empowerment, ignoring any other marginalized emergent artist or art form in the article. The 60 plus galleries exhibiting at the fair also focused primarily on the artists that they have patronized over the years. Shifts in the medium, the themes, the audience taste were also not underscored. Yet there is a silent shift taking place. For instance, it was refreshing to see that many artists are choosing to create and treat the cloth slash canvas not as the material on which art is made, but as the medium itself. Whether this choice of textile as the artistic medium has been influenced by high-end fashion and related design industries remains an open question. But what is clear is that several artists are choosing thread, weaving, knotting and other treatments of fabric as artistic medium in highly innovative and self-conscious ways. There appears to be no discernible link between the artistic choice of textile and the millennia old indigenous artisanal traditions of weaving found across the subcontinent. The influence of Mrinalini Mukherjee, 1949-2015, uh, now deceased, on the artists working between the mediums is undeniable. Even in Mukherjee's even as Mukherjee moved seamlessly from clay to bronze to fabric, she asserted that she was not a textile artist per se, following in the lineage of linear art, uh, weaving artisans. She broke new ground as she handled hemp, for instance, in knots, macrame and weave, thereby giving new shape and malleability to her work. Her subjects also defied ready thematic categories, straddling domains between the anthropomorphic and the biomorphic, between haute couture and interior design, between religious ritual and cosmopolitan performance. Not unlike the modernity that Mukherjee exemplified, the fiber artist exhibited at the IAF also obliquely deconstructed the very treatment of cloth as the base for oil and acrylic painting. 
I am not saying that these artists are imitating Mukherjee, far from it. They are in fact marking a departure from European Renaissance conventions of paint on canvas, quattrocento, framing and the primacy of the visual that have become as naturalized as they have over the last 500 years. Pasa Chakravarti, for instance, evokes a three-dimensional effect in the textile collage. Manish Pulkale weaves words and images into fabric, thereby creating a palimpsest. Antonio Santini creates the impression of fabric weave and fold in oil. Shobha Bruta paints abstractions with thread. Ratna Gupta takes what at first glance looks like Kantha-like embroidery but is a very different method which he elevates to a level of abstraction not otherwise found in the narrative and ritualistic functions of Kantha. Alpita Akhanda attempts a fusion between yarn and long staple grass to highlight not just the corporeality of these materials but their centrality in the artistic and imaginative lives of rural women. Textile is text. Today we think of the word text as something within or printed or written something definitive and original rather than secondary or derived. But the etymology actually comes from the Latin word textus, which in turn is derived from texer, to weave. The emergence of woven arts today helps me to make the case that these artists are on the threshold of a very different modernity. The artists I have highlighted are inventing a new medium. They are attempting to make meaning not merely through the phenomenology of the visual, but the tactile as well. Meaning emanates in these works of art at the warp and weft of intersecting yarns and the amalgam of materials repeatedly. In this, the artist is taking liberties with design, dimension and materiality. So yes, Indian art is taking a turn, but not along the routes that Western art has taken over the last hundred years towards the political, the identity politics of the marginalized, the artistic expression of the trans community, the Guardian Review notwithstanding. The turn, in my view, is towards the visceral, the tactile, and eventually the contemplative. The tissue of this art is attempting both a bodily proximity to the presence of the connoisseur and a continuum between the organic and the synthetic. Two conclusions emanate from the above. One, the primacy of the visual in the, between the connoisseur and the work established through the content of the painting is dislodged. Two, the artwork is not easily reproducible either mechanically or digitally, thereby arresting the process of the homogenization and the fragmentation, the recontextualization of the meaning of the artwork. There is a third more tentative conclusion I want to explore here. Is it possible, for instance, that we are visiting the philosophical import of the Gandhian recommendation that each person spin and weave on a regular basis to connect with one's artistic impulses, thereby consciously distancing herself from the ravages of machine manufacturing processes and her consumption of these manufactured goods? to the exclusion of the self-made artistic artisanal object. I have clarified earlier that the artists deploying textile as artistic medium are not in the tradition of the artisanal weaver, the embroidery worker or the block print maker. But there is another way in which the textile artist is forging an Indic modernity that is in sharp contrast 
to the macro scale or what we have come to understand as the Nehruvian modernity of mammoth panoramas, state-sponsored institutions of art and state patronage of artists. The textile artist has decided to oscillate between the grand and the intimate, between the broad stroke and the microscopic, between the durable and the fragile. Many of these works of art are intended not for display on expansive walls, nor are they designed to be viewed from a distance of a few feet in a gallery or a spacious home. Instead, these pieces are to be handed from one connoisseur to another, delicately and intimately. These departures may, in the final analysis, turn out to be the most far-reaching encounter between the art connoisseur and the artist via the art object. It is in this gentle and refreshing exchange that I want to mark the proverbial pivotal turning point of Indian Art Fair 2022. If you like this video, please indicate so. Please subscribe to the channel. Share the video with your friends.